Hello everyone, it's Eagle of Zeus here, and I know it's been a while since I made a video, but I finally have the time to make a, another video. Um, in this video, I've actually been planning on making for a while now. I was going to make it like when I posted my last videos, but I just got too tired and I never ended up making it. Um, but the video is going to be about uh, when people limit the gods. You know, they limit what, like, the dominions the gods have over things. And, you know, they basically limit what the gods do and what they have dominion over. And, you know, what they represent in our world and how they connect with us and things like that. So, Aphrodite is going to be the main example you know, that I'm going to use in this video since she's probably one of the most misunderstood and misrepresented gods or deities, god, goddesses, gods, in my opinion. Um, so, but I also want to mention uh, Zeus and, and Apollon as well, and I'm going to use them as an example first. Like, for example, Zeus is mainly known as the god of thunder. He's mainly associated with thunder. If you ask, you know, like somebody on the street, what is Zeus associated with or what he's the god of, most people are going to say thunder or lightning. But he's really so much more than that. Zeus is the god of law and order. He's the king of the gods. He's the father of mankind. He's He is associated with thunder and lightning, but that's because he's the god of the sky or the heavens. He has dominion over the heavens, the sky. And he's also... Um, uh, you know, he's the... He is the god of law and order, as I said but also kind of like the god of like fathers as well. So, you know, he's more than just he's more than just the god of thunder and lightning like a lot of people know him as. Um and same with Apollon. Apollon well, if you ask most people, most people will probably say Apollon is the god of the sun, but he's not actual. I mean, He's a, he is a sun god. He's associated with the sun, but he's associated with the sun through his dominion over light. He's basically the light of the sun. And, um, but he's, you know, he's the god of light, but he's also a god of healing, music, divination, truth. And, but he's also the god of plague, which... Some people may not know that about him. He's the god of healing, but he's also the god of plague. So, you know, the gods are very diverse. And I feel like a lot of people limit them a lot. And Aphrodite is, like I said, going to be my main example for this video. Since people limit her a lot. People see Aphrodite mainly as just the goddess of love and beauty. And that's it. But she is associated with many other things. And honestly, if you want to know... If you want to know... Um, if you want to get to know the gods better, I would suggest looking at their epithets. And basically their titles of their different aspects. Because that will give you good ideas and a good feel for all of what they encompass and what they connect with and what they have dominion over. Um, so Aphrodite, like I said, most people know her as the goddess of love and beauty, but she's also a goddess of war. Some people may not know that. Well, some people, you know, know that she's associated with Ares, the god of war. They were um, known as being lovers in mythology. But love is actually a really important part of war. And it 
is connected with war. And Aphrodite is the love and passion that people have when they go to war. You know, uh, wars are usually fought over something that people are passionate about, whether it be their country or, you know, fighting to protect their loved ones. There's a lot of passion and love involved in war. And Aphrodite is that passion and love. And she was worshipped as a war goddess, mainly in Sparta, but also Laconia. I think that's how you pronounce it as well. Um, Aphrodite Araya, or Ar I think it's, um, or Araya was her title in Sparta. And that means protect protectress of cities. So Aphrodite was also known as a protectress of cities. And she has a lot more epithets and a lot more um, dominions as well. She's also a sea goddess, mainly because of her mythology, how she was born. She was born from the sea, from sea foam. But she's also a goddess associated with the sea. And uh, um, also fertility and procreation. Which, a lot of people know that as well, that she's also a fertility and procreation goddess. She's also a goddess of pleasure and passion, which a lot of people know as well. But that doesn't always have to mean sexual pleasure and passion either. Um, people can be passionate about anything, really. It doesn't always have to mean sexual passion. Um, the love and passion you feel for anything or anybody, that's Aphrodite. Um, but she has a lot of epithets. I wrote some down here. Um, Aphrodite, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce these. I'm not, I don't speak Greek and I'm not that good at the pronunciation. So I apologize in advance if I mispronounce any of these. But, um, Aphrodite Euploia, I think is how you say it. And that is she of the fair voyage, which, um, some sailors, prayed to her before going on a voyage. Um, Aphrodite Korotrophos, nurture of the young. She's also a protectress of the young. Uh, Aphrodite Polyhymnos, many hymned or of many praises. Aphrodite um, Genetilis, which means mother. Aphrodite Biodotus, life giver. Aphrodite. Um, Chrissy. I'm sorry. I feel really bad. That I can't pronounce the the name the words right, but that means the golden one. Aphrodite. Now this one is actually pretty interesting. This epithet, and it's Aphrodite Mechanitus. Which means skilled in inventing. And she's associated with arts and crafts. Which I didn't know that until recently actually. That she could be associated with arts and crafts. But then I thought about it. People put a lot of passion into art. People put a lot of passion and love into the things they create. Whether it be painting, drawing, sculpting, writing even or theater even, or any type of art, whether it be visual art, performing art, any types of arts and crafts, people put a lot of love and passion into things they create. So this epithet actually makes a lot of sense, the more I thought about it. And arts and crafts are seen as beauty, beautiful creations. So she's also associated with arts and crafts. And finally, one of my favorite, this is probably my favorite epithet of hers, is Aphrodite Pandemos, which means common to all, or uh, common of, or Aphrodite of all people. And she is the uniting force that bonds us all together, which is love. She binds people together. And she's just so much more than what people limit her to be, just the goddess of love and beauty and that's it, or the goddess of fertility, sex. You know, she's so much more than that. 
there's so much more different types of love than just romantic love. She's the love of friends. She's the love of family. Um, anything. She's the love and passion people have for their work or their, their hobbies or their, their job, their occupation. Um, she's so much more than just the goddess of sex and beauty. And there's so many different types of beauty as well. I mean, not just physical beauty. There's the beauty of, of our, like what's inside of us, our hearts. There's the beauty of the world around us, the beauty of everything. Um, you know, there, she's just, you know, limitless. I mean, love is all around us and she's all around us. Um, like I said, she's a goddess of the sea. She's known as a sea goddess because of her mythology of how she was born and sailors would pray to her. And even in Sparta, they worshiped her as a war goddess, a protectress of cities. Um, she's the passion th that people have, the passion and love that drives people to go to war, to fight for what they believe in and for the people they want to protect. Um, anyway, so she's just so much more than what people limit her to be. And that goes for all of the gods and goddesses. They're so much more than what people limit them to be. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend looking into the epithets of the gods and, you know, knowing more about them, learning more about them, getting a feel for who they really are and all of what they encompass and, and, uh, how the ancients worship them in the various ways. Um, so yeah, and once again, I apologize for mispronouncing the the epithets. Like I said, I'm not fluent in Greek. I, I don't speak Greek. I tr I'm trying to learn it, but I'm not good with the pronunciation, but hopefully the English translation, uh, you know, got the point across. So <laughs> I guess I'll end the video here and, um, yep. So, and I will see you guys in the next video. I do want to make more videos. Hopefully I can make more videos soon. So I will see you guys in the next video and may the gods bless you all. Bye.